Welcome to our show. Welcome to Take Us to the Streets TV. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. We have two amazing guests. We have my sister, Cora Langford, yes. and we have our musician, singer, Pastor Israel Love. And we've got a great show. We're going to be talking tonight about love and forgiveness. And, you know, it almost makes me want to cry because I love you guys so much and I want you to get the message so badly about what Cora went through and how her life was changed from tragedy to love. And so welcome, Cora, and God bless you. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm blessed that you're here. Thank you so much. I just want to give God the glory first. And and uh, just to share my story a little bit, I, I was molested at the age of seven through the age of 11 years old. And I thought I had forgiven my dad, my stepfather, and through that time of, of, of growing up, I went to college and pretty much just thought drinking, alcohol, having fun with men, all that, that's what life was supposed to be about. But after I turned my life over about two years ago, I realized that that wasn't that, wow. that um, I needed Jesus in my heart. Well, let's go back a little bit, Cora. Uh, how old were you when all of this started, when you were 10, 11 years old, about that age? Well, yeah, between 7 and 11 is when... During that time yes. is when it happened? Yes. And I, I can't even imagine how you would be able to go to school and be able to live and function, you know, in a situation like that where you're getting up and you're bruised and you're hurt. Yeah, God it, just really did something to me. Um, I was able to play athlete athletics um, from elementary school to college. I went to University of Oregon on a on discus scholarship. And... I was a person that always encouraged people, that was positive. I inspired people. God just gave me that extra edge right. of, of letting that other stuff die inside of me. But I was able to go and participate in sports and be a great athlete. So you found that to be an actual outlet yes. of, of who you are. Yes. Of who the real person is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's such a, a tragic story, but it's got such a great ending, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But you know what's coming to my mind, Cora, and to the audience, is that we all bring something with us from the past. In my past, you know, my father was a Mennonite, was raised by a Mennonite pastor, and my mother was a Christian. And my journey was that I was actually going through a lot of abuse in my own home by my siblings. And we've talked about that, yes. you know, in particular my younger sister. Yes. And, of course, it took me a long time to forgive her. And I know that it must have taken you a long time to forgive your dad as well. Right. And, and really, I mean, it was actually about two years ago when I came back to the Lord. And this past year, the Lord's been dealing with me, raising me up. And I realized that when I became a Christian that I wasn't supposed to go and condemn people and judge people, that that's not what... God wanted us to do. And God wants us to love people and forgive people. And, and if you read the Bible, it says that the greatest commandment is, is love. Right. And so, therefore, I had to go back and, and think about, wow, I need to forgive those people who have really hurt me, including my stepfather. And, you know, one thing about forgiveness, and I want to share this with our viewers, too, because, you know, I was going through this just the other day, you know, about somebody that had hurt me and wounded me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I forgive him. And then I said, but help me do the work. You know, help me to actually put those words into action. And because it's a process, don't you think? Processing. Oh, it's, it's totally a process. Because yes. it, in order to live, we have to forgive. There, there's no way to cross over to that other place. And I believe that's why Jesus said, before you go to the altar, if you have aught in your heart against your brother, or your sister, you know, go to them and repair that, and then come before the throne of grace, and I will lift you up. So Amen. it's it's part of the process on how God had set this in motion, you know, that the process of forgiveness, and even at times you could even have what the world would call a flashback, you know, and we have to lay that back down again. We have to lay that back down, and we have to surrender it again, you know, so that we can have God's perfect love. Yes. And so. And speaking of His perfect love is, which is really agape love. And agape love is is the love of God. If you have 
God's heart, you have the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that love of Christ means that for your brother, if they call you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and they're stranded somewhere, and you will go out of your bed and go and pick them up, you will go rescue them no matter what this situation is. Mm -hmm. Or if maybe someone just needs some food or some help and, and they're really struggling, and God wants us to be encouragers mm -hmm. and, and go and help and uplift our brothers and sisters Amen. that are in need. Amen. We've got such a mighty God. That's one of His spirits. It's a spirit of might. Yes. And I love that. And the same spirit that he put in Christ is the same spirit that he put in us. Brother Israel, how about a song right now? I feel like the Lord is saying, let's celebrate through music of his amazing love. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. love of the Lord is new every morning. And you know what? You can go to bed at night. You know, this is how does that scripture you know about? <laughs> and you rise up in the morning, you know. I mean, and it's so true because you can go to bed sometimes with a heavy heart, you know, especially with everything that's happening in our world. And we've got a world right here that we love the world so much. It's just like Jesus said in John 3, 17, 3, 17, 3 16. Sorry, folks. <laughs> That God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe on Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the message of Take It to the Streets TV, is just get that message out on the street, folks. You know, with what's going on right now with ISIS, Al-Qaeda, what went on today in Mali, we've got Africa right here. What happened today in Mali, you know, there's people out there that are hurting. And we can't always go there, but we can always pray for them. And that will be showing our steadfast love for you. Cora, tell me a little bit about when you went through that transition from forgiveness to today, to who you are today in Christ. I want to hear about that. Wow. I just really want to praise God, and I just give God all the glory for Him raising me up. I, I just thank God that, that when we worship, that that's... That's, that's the greatest thing is, is to know that he loves us so much, to be in his presence. I mean, that's the most amazing thing is to be in his presence and to know that no matter what you've done wrong, that God forgives us. And through that forgiveness, that's how I learned that I could forgive everyone else wow. that's ever hurt me in my life. Wow. Through that same principle. Yes, through that same principle. It's amazing. Yes. That... You could take that. Now, how old were you when you started to hunger for God, when you were coming out of that uh, sexual abuse? How, how old were you when you started thinking that there is something bigger than this in this world? Well, I was saved at the age of 11, and that's okay. when the molestation stopped. Um, and basically, I mean, I was having already visions and dreams back then. Mm -hmm. And God just um, basically was revealing those things that I had seen from years ago and up to current now. And I realized that in order for me to capture and to bring people to the Lord, that I have to have love. 
I have to have love in my heart, you know, because that's, that's who I am. Remember, we're made as the image of Christ. And so, therefore, if Christ is love, therefore we are love as well. And we should love everyone. It doesn't matter who they are, what they do. Mm-hmm. It does not matter. Mm-hmm. We need to love them. That's God's greatest commandments is that you love one right. another. You know, it's interesting that, we're, that you're bringing it to that realm because the other day I was actually heard the teacher in my Bible college, <laughs> one of my teachers, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, the government and different things that we're really unhappy with, you know, and, and she said, you know what, they're made in God's image. And it mm-hmm. was such a quick snapback, you know, like at one time... I was like them, you know, maybe yes. not on the same level of government. I've never been in government. But as far as making bad decisions and deceiving, you know, I mean, we all have, we're all born, you know, as a little, you know, you, if yes. you've had children, as well, I don't know if you have any children. I know you do, occur, but yes. I mean, a two-year-old knows how to hide a, hook, a cookie, right? <laughs> so you just take that on the adult level of what that can be, yes. you know. But it's in our nature, unfortunately, but that's how God made us. But then he also made us so that we can be redeemed and so that we can be changed by choosing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes. Amen. And that's what you did. And that's yes. what changed you into this beautiful woman of God today. Yes. I'm I, so I thank God to... for that. I really yeah. do. <laughs> yes. I really praise them because um, I, I see too many ministers and, and ministries that, that really shouldn't be maybe on the pulpit because... I see their hearts and speak to the people and their, core and their and hearts, the hearts aren't right. And, and God wants us to have good hearts because I just even hate to even think about even making it, not making it into, into heaven without having, you could do all those things that God has, you know, you can go save, you can go heal and all that. But if you don't love, who's mm-hmm. to say that you're going to heaven? Mm-hmm. So therefore I have chosen to love mm-hmm. and no matter what, it's taken me a long time. I have to love myself. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to love others, mm-hmm. and that's part of it. A lot of people don't realize that you have to love yourself and let God love you and fill you. Yes, yes. And what's coming to my mind right now is in First uh, John 5, you know, what, what it says. It says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your might, and all, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then anything that you ask according to his will, that he will do that. But he does require us to to love him, to recognize him, to worship him, to love others, but also as ourselves. And I remember teaching that when I was pastoring in another town, you know, the congregation, I I felt like they were just kind of like, you know, taken back because so many people don't know how to love themselves. And it's difficult, you know, because we remember everything that we did wrong. Yes. You know, and God doesn't. And that's what's so amazing about God is that he sees us as perfect. And, and that's the reason why people need to forgive themselves, too. So not only are you forgiving the person that's affected you and hurt you, but you have to forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. Because once you forgive this yourself, the devil cannot come through there and say, Oh, ha, ha, you, you know, this and this and this. No, no, no. The Lord, the Lord will bring justice and mm-hmm. he will take care of whatever issues mm-hmm. that that person did to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's important to have that love of Christ in your heart. Amen. Amen. Brother Israel, you want to play us a song? Yes. His presence is heaven. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty in this world Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Your presence is heaven Your presence is heaven to me. We love you, Jesus. 
Lord. We love you, Jesus. Yes, Father God. Hallelujah. All my days on earth I will proclaim Till the moment that I see you face to face Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Lord. I just feel your connection to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, you know, and how he's moved your life and changed your life. And we're going to have more with Israel so we can get to know him on a deeper level on another show. So we're looking forward to that too, Brother Israel. And Cora, you know what? I want to bring this to the attention, you know, of the viewers that are watching this. You know, God speaks to me in different ways than he does perhaps to you or to you. Because he knows us all individually. He knows us all yes. by our name. Yes. And so God speaks to me in different ways. And one of the ways that I heard the Lord speaking to me was about getting ready. And he said, get ready, live ready, and stay ready. And so I was just, you know, so wanted to bring that message to you, the viewers, that I actually took this out and put it in the parking lot and painted it myself, you know, <laughs> because I was determined, viewers, because I love you, that I was going to be able to get you ready so that you could live ready, so that you could stay ready. I know you're thinking, well, why would God have to say it in three different ways? Well, when you study the Bible, you know, you realize that God speaks in threes. He is a trinity. He is the Father, the Amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right? And throughout the Bible, you'll see many things in three, just like we're body, soul, and spirit. You know, we're three in one, but it's on a physical level, whereas his is on a spiritual level. But he spoke it to me three different times, and that's the message that I want to bring to you. And we've talked about this, Cora, you know, the importance of getting ready. And one of the ways that we can get ready, viewers, is by loving by forgiving and I see that in you and I see that in your ministry I mean she's like in every church so if you want to get in touch with her her phone number will be up on the screen and her email <laughs> address God. as well too make sure that you get in touch with Cora because she moves in this very eloquent love that is so undeniable and when I met somebody that I said something about well do you know Cora and they says yeah she's just full of love and it's really who she is. She's like the ultimate Jesus love bug, is what you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just praise God for that one. <laughs> you know, but before we go, we're going to close up in just a little, about five more minutes, Cora. But do you have a message for the audience? Has God told you something about getting ready? What can we do to live ready, to get ready? What I want to say to you, sometimes it may be hard to even look at the person that's hurt you, that's wounded you, even, even, I mean, from way back as a little girl such as myself. But I'm telling you right now that the empowerment after I forgave my dad over the phone because I couldn't connect with him in person because he lives out of state, and then the empowerment was from him saying that he's been, torment, been being tormented for so many years. And that empowerment that gave me and then released him and broke all those chains from both himself and I, it was the most amazing mm -hmm. gift I never experienced in my whole entire right. life. Because it released him. Yes. And it allowed him yes. to forgive himself. Yes. So those you know? chains can be broken. You just need to forgive. And you just need to love on those people and bless those people who curse you. Bless them, because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to bless those people and pray for people. And I'm telling you right now that your life will change if you forgive people and love on them like you've never loved on them before. And if you have children, you know what a love is. You know what love is. So that's what God wants us to do. He's, he's our Father, and He wants us to love one another. Excuse me, Cora, but somebody's on the phone. They want to talk to us. You know, we're here. We want to hear your voice. Um, hello, this is Pastor Sherry and Cora. Uh, we're so glad that you called in. Yes. How are you? Speak to us. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Manuel. Hi, how are you? How are you? God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you for calling I in. To, uh, I was wondering if you guys could pray for me and my wife, her name is Antonia. We've been separated for five months. We have a very year old with a uh, age of 12 and a half years. We would love to pray for you, and we're going to pray for you right now in agreement, brother. Um, Cora, you want to lead in prayer for this gentleman who's he's praying that he and his wife can be reconciled. Can you pray for him? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord Jesus. I lift up this man of God to you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to uh, reconnect his family, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will show him favor, Lord, and that all the hurts and wounds of whatever, Lord Jesus, has gone in their life, Father God, that you will bless them, Lord, and that you will heal both of them. Heal their hearts, Father God. Fill their hearts right now, Lord Jesus. Let him fill your presence, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for him, Lord Jesus. And we amen. thank you for this miracle. In, In Jesus' name, name, amen. Thank you so much for calling in, brother. And remember what I was saying early on in John. Read John 1 and read every chapter. And when you get to the part where it says, To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, to love your neighbor as yourself, and anything you ask according to his will, he will do it. And one thing that we know for certain, and that marriage is God's covenant. You, when you made the marriage vow, you made a covenant between you and your wife and God. And God will honor that covenant. So pray. Just continue to pray. And don't look at anything that doesn't, you know, looks like a distraction where the enemy would want to get you off track and discourage you. Because one of the things that the enemy wants to do, and you probably experienced it yourself too, sister, is that he wants to cause doubt in us. Yes. You know, and, but perfect love casts out all fear. So, you know, how do we get to that perfect love? You know, we can only get through, through Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Through Jesus Christ yes. is that perfect love. So just allow yourself to, to uh, bask in this love. And don't forget the, the Holy Spirit because the words is to quench not the Holy Spirit. So let the Holy Spirit just have free reign in you. And you know what? When you fall in love with Jesus, your wife is going to fall in love with you because it just Amen. seems to go that way, doesn't yes. it? You know, yes. they, they, they'll see that love in you and they'll see that transformation. You may have already gone through that path. I don't know. But we can always increase. Because one of the things I like about being an older Christian, I've been a Christian for 42 years, is the fact that we go from glory to glory, which means that we're always improving. We're always getting higher. And the thing is, is that we want to grow and grow and grow until we're finally in heaven. Yes. And we're looking at God face to face. So, folks, what I want to tell you Live ready. Live ready to see the Lord. Because that's what we want to do. We don't want to go through all this for nothing. Am I right, Cora? That's right. Because I can go back to the world, but it doesn't look so good anymore. Right? Yeah, we just need to submit <laughs> everything to the Lord, all of our burdens. Give Him everything. And I'm telling you right now that God will change everything around for you in your life. And you will be amazed in what He does. And I'm just hearing the Lord again say, greater things have yet to come. Yes. Greater yes. things have yet to come. Yes. So I believe that. I know it. And God's, God's saying it right now. And he's going to do it. He's going to change our life around. But you need right. to forgive. Right. And you need to love those right. people. And one of the things that I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, I love you so much. Thank you for watching Take It to the Streets TV. Thank you, Cora. God bless her. I love you. Love you too. Pastor Israel, thank you so much for being here. But I want to leave this in closing because this is what God told me. Remember, I hear things, I write things, I want to tell you things. <laughs> and this is, we don't walk in fear. We walk by faith. Amen. And when I overcame cancer, and you guys will hear me talking about it throughout various programs, I had to walk by faith. And it was a long journey, a long, long journey. Because you live like, am I going to die, Lord? Am I going to die, you know? But I had to just take everything that I could to build my faith. And that's called the gift of faith. Look that up in your Bibles and you're going to find that. And for the brother that called about his wife, I'm going to encourage you to look that scripture up too. You know, the gift of faith to build us up in our inner man so that we can get stronger and stronger and stronger. Because let me tell you something, folks. This world is in perilous times. I wish I could give you a different commentary on that. 
but the best news that I can tell you is the good news. And that Jesus Christ is the good news. He is the good news. And he loves you. And he loves you. Yes. So much. Yes. Oh, God bless you. Do you want to close that with a song for us, Pastor? This uh, Thanksgiving that's coming up, just remember to give thanks to the Lord for everything. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, we give thanks. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We love you, family, so much. Thank you so much for joining us. It's like, I, you know, I'm just like a crybaby because I always want to cry because I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful to be yes. here. We love you. Thank you. Jesus love you. loves you. Yes. Get ready. <laughs> yes. Get ready. Stay ready.